the world premiere trailer for the new Halo Wars 2 expansion, Awakening the Nightmare. And now it's demo time, baby! Joining me to put the game through its paces are Brian Gerard and Max Schlager. Max and Brian, thanks, guys. Nice to see you guys. It's great to be back. Yeah, Brian, so we, we're going to do live gameplay here, right? That's what yeah. I'm told. Because right, I said I am not having you guys back unless we're going to do it live. We'll do it live! Yeah. All right, so let's start it up and tell us what we're going to look at here. Uh, Max, you want to lead in here? Yeah, we're going to be showing our new mode here, Terminus Firefight. Uh, it's a wave-based kind of horde mode, um, and Greg Stone is going to be demoing for us. Uh, this particular mode is really cool because you've got a base that you can build up uh, like you would in your traditional deathmatch, but you've also got these new barricades and turrets and just waves and waves of enemies coming to get you. So, Larry, you know about Firefight, right? I oh, mean, it's, I know it well. And, you know, you mentioned Gears, similar horde mode. It's yep. you versus just wave after wave of crazy amounts of enemies. Uh, it gets harder and harder in yep. the game. You've got to play three people cooperatively. Yep. And I believe it does dynamically scale and become more difficult as more players join in. So. Greg's goal here is to try to stay alive. Our demo at E3 is five levels. Five levels. And uh, Greg's goal is to try to persist and not let them destroy the big spire we saw, which is called the Terminus. Greg, just a few million people watching. No big deal, buddy. <laughs> so he's at it over there right now. So now, so this is new. This is now available. Uh, well, this content, this the Awakening content. the Nightmare yep. expansion, comes out this fall. This fall, so this is so, an early look. Yep, brand new mode. Um, this will be the first time most people are here seeing it, but it has been Probably playable in the show much. here yep. all week at E3. And he can play as the Banished. Yeah, absolutely. Let's tell me so, about that. Yeah, well, well, he's getting started. Um, in addition to this new mode, there is a campaign expansion, yep. so it sort of takes place a few months after the events of Halo Wars 2. Yep. And the whole campaign plays out from the perspective of Atriox and his Banished forces. and. If you saw the trailer on Monday, you know they find a ancient foe we haven't seen since Halo 3. And that ancient foe is terrifying. It is, of course, the, the flood. flood. <laughs> We're going to see the flood in a little bit, right? Oh, I, as long as uh, Greg lives long enough, yeah, yeah we, we will definitely see some flood. And let's be clear, you cannot miss it. So, Max, what are we taking a look at here? So, Greg is basically, he's building up some uh, different defenses here. You saw him earlier. He was taking his turrets, uh, doing some different upgrades on them. He was building down some of the barricades there, and you've got a few different kinds. Some of them, like he's got spike traps, which you could place down when you walk over it. It'll yeah. pop up for people. You got barrels that you can shoot and explode, and you've got like these shield walls basically that just provide a hard barrier for enemies to get through. And the map here, one of your main goals is to expand out into different territories. Uh, we have a you know a special scoring system for this mode that helps make it replayable. So it's all about how you control your territories and how well you can basically defeat the incoming enemies. Right, so you can see he's getting ready here. Yeah, it's, I don't know if you play tower defense games at all, Larry, but this is kind of like that. You'll notice yeah. in the mini-map right down there, it's it's showing Greg exactly where the enemies are going to be spawning from, and you yep. kind of see their path. So like a tower defense game, he could go along that path, build the barriers that Max described, add some turrets, and kind of soften them up before they finally reach his base. I mean, that's the interesting thing about Halo Wars, too, is that there's a lot of common elements from a few different games, but each of the different game modes is there's a lot of completely different strategy. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, one thing Greg hasn't done, I'm going to call him out right now. Uh, of course, there he goes. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> you know, Halo Wars multiplayer is all about your leaders, right? Yeah. So we have two new leaders that we're showing off at the show here that's going to be released this month as part of our DLC season pass. Yep. I think fans would be happy to know that the Arbiter is back. He's back. The Halo One, uh, Halo Wars Arbiter has returned. So Greg wants to make sure he's using these leader powers because they're game changers and they're there for a reason. So uh, I'm glad to see he's now doing that. Yeah, and this, this, this in particular, every time we do a new leader, we're trying to do something that changes up the game style, uh, changes up the way that you might play. So for the Arbiter in particular, he's got a lot of abilities um, that center around this rage mechanic and so as you use leader powers they stack up and they make your units stronger right and uh, it lets you use them more often so it's really all about just kind of bringing in more constantly and so hopefully uh, Greg will have a, an opportunity to show that off on some of the bigger waves that come in here we saw some of the uh, we saw a lot of the defenses but can you really outline what line by line some of the new defenses we can expect yeah so um, basically as you so you start out you've got a, a main base effectively which you could still build your turret spots on an upgrade once you go a little further out, you've got, you could see these little wall segments here where you could basically build barricades. Yep. The barricades are different from UNSC versus Spanish, so okay. different advantages. Yep. Um, you know, some are tougher, some are a little bit, they provide more mobility for your troops. Um, and, you know, like I said here, he's got kind of the three different templates, some that are more effective against uh, incoming melee units, some that are just straight up shield walls. 
By the way, I love the fact he's waiting for the, for the next wave here, and he's like chatting with the fans. There we go, man. Here, here we, we go. go. So now we're going to see how well some of these defenses work against the Flood, who starts uh, walking in. Uh, and then as you expand out and build those bases, then you also get more turret slots, and so you get different kinds of turrets you can upgrade. And All right, there we go. Yeah, we can see what's going on now. Yeah, so this is our first Flood wave starting to move in. By this yep. time, I mean, Greg's got a pretty nice size force, so I think he's in, I think he's in pretty good shape. Also, I should just mention, for folks that may not know, uh, this yeah. game obviously looks awesome on Xbox One S. An HDR update was released with our last patch last month. Yes, it was. Uh, also runs on Win 10 at 4K resolution. Looks stunning. So, And it also supports uh, Windows, you know, Xbox Play Anywhere. Yep, buy it yep. once, play it on both platforms. Your, your, your progress in the campaign goes back and forth. And it's, it's delightful. So I now know. things are heating up a little bit. Yeah. I think Greg's doing There he goes. Now he's starting to bring those leader powers. So you can imagine in a three-player game, legendary difficulty, much more challenging, but pretty interesting. The three of us could pick different leaders and yeah. kind of synergize and use our leader powers in cool ways to really uh, give us the advantage. Yeah, he's really he's really digging in there. Bonus quarter struck. How close? So the wave is kind of coming to an end here. We can see the enemies coming in. Yeah, you see at the upper right there. Uh, yeah. He's right now in wave four. This demo will go to well, there's five waves, and he's infected 47 out of 111. So right now. We just got that notification. Wave five's about to start, which features yep. the abomination. Max, um, what's the story of that guy, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, so one of the cool things about the waves, too, is we're going to have these base phase boss waves, these mini boss waves, uh, where you get some really big heavy units coming in to attack you. And in this particular wave, we've got a flood commander that's going to come in, and he's a really strong melee uh, threat and uh, surrounded by a bunch of his minions there. And so uh, he's going to come in, and you'll see. That's going to put a lot more strain on uh, Greg's defenses and his forces, so he's got to really make sure his base and his powers are ready to go. Let's kind of dig in. Uh, yeah, he's getting ready for it. Should any, be, they should be coming in any minute here. Any minute now. We're waiting for the big reveal. Don't fail me now, Greg. <laughs> All units. And, you're just uh, shooting in. You're watching a little bit of Halo Wars. This is the brand new downloadable content go. that's coming later this year, right, Brian? Yep, it'll be yep. out in the fall, Larry. It's uh, full campaign expansion when this is our new multiplayer mode called Terminus Firefly. Oh, here comes the there's the, oh, there's the big oh my commander. God. Yep. Now we're going to find out what Greg's made of. I'm having flashbacks to 10 plus years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's been almost 10 years since right. we've seen uh, the flood. Look yellow. at that boss in the middle. That's the abomination. Take him down. Take him down, Greg. So one of the things he tries to do is pull these units across these different defenses that yeah. he has. He's trying to lead them on a little bit. That's yep. right, yeah. God, those, those, the way those flood swarm is unbelievable. Yeah, you know, they're they're not that powerful in, in their own right, but once enough of them get on top of you, uh, it, they'll... In, tr in typical flood fashion. Absolutely. All right, because he's going after the boss now. Yep. He's going to try and get around, and the bosses are always going to go after your nexus. That's the home the home part of your base you really got to defend, so that's where he's, he's moving towards. Yep, it's, it's coming down here to the final. Greg's already got 224,000. That's actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the cool things, too, about this mode is there's a lot of different factors that play into how you score in the mode. So right. you can choose your difficulty. That's kind of a multiplier. You've also got bases, and as you expand out, that increases your multiplier. If you lose them, it goes back down. How quickly you defeat the waves and, you know, how many enemies you can destroy at any given time, all that factors into how you score. I don't think this guy is even going to get near his spire. He's still just kiting, yeah, he's, him, he's kiting him around like he's an expert. Yeah, he's doing a pretty good job here. I, I feel like he's making this look easy. I mean, that is the caveat. We did make this uh, extra, a little extra easy demo for the show here, but at home it's going to be uh, certainly more challenging. Congratulations, Greg. And I think I think that's about it. Greg's yeah, going to be... do it. Apparently he's playing easy go. mode. Nice. <laughs> nice work, nice Greg. Nice work, Greg. Yeah. All right. Earlier this week, Kiki Wolfkill brought us a Halo Plasma rifle with a, that a bunch of you guys over 343 yep. signed.